Patient and family advisory councils have become increasingly effective in healthcare organizations across the United States. These patients and family members come together to support their hospitals in a number of ways. They offer great insight to leaders and staff within the hospitals as to the perceptions from patients and families in the care that they receive. In some cases, PFAC members interact with patients and their families and are able to advocate for them, mitigating potential risks for quality issues and experiences that the patients and families encountered. This feedback helps hospitals to really understand the voice of the patient and their families. Today we will see how a patient and family advisory council chair was able to provide intervention for a mother whose daughter had a procedure performed and some serious challenges thereafter. The intervention from Reggie had major positive consequences for that family. For nurses and physicians, I think the takeaway is to learn to really listen to patients and their family members through the lens of appreciative inquiry rather than defensiveness, as you will see within the story. Let's listen in. I'm meeting here with Dottie, and we want to talk for a moment about her daughter and the experience that she had recently within the last year of when she went to the hospital. And Dottie, what was the reason that your daughter went to the hospital? Uh, she, was, she was very anemic and they needed to do a test to find out if she had any internal bleeding. So they did this procedure where they put a scope down her throat through her pancreas to look at her liver. They saw, they had seen a spot on her liver. Well, the spot was just a shadow. But then that, and then she um, she developed a lot of pain in the in recovery, and um, they sent her home because the recovery room was closing. And the next morning, she called me and said, "Take me back to emergency. I'm in a terrible, excruciating pain." I took her to the emergency room, and they were examining her and came to the conclusion that she had pancreatitis. So they admitted her to the hospital. Pancreatitis. They began treating her for pancreatitis. And then how long was she in the hospital? She Dottie? was only in the hospital for a couple of days and they thought she was well enough to go to a nursing home. And, the, and was that nursing home close by? Very close. Okay, experience. Uh, she was in the nursing home for maybe a day and a half and she spiked a fever. So they sent her back to the hospital. And then she was there for a, a I don't remember how long, but for a few more days. And then they sent her back to the nursing home and she just kept getting worse all the time. A friend down the street said that you were with the um, um, patient advocacy group at the hospital and that you could probably help me. So I came to see, her, see you and told you the story and uh, we went to see Vani at the nursing home and you were just appalled at the way she looked. And at that point, what did you think about your daughter? What were you thinking? About? I thought she was dying. And she was in such pain, she just kept saying, let me die, let me die. I can't imagine having lost my daughter. I, I would have been just totally devastated. I depend so much on her. And I remember coming to see her. And I, I held her hand and said to her, I'm here to help you. How can I help you? And, you, and she said to me, tell me how many more days I have. I know I'm dying. And I said, I, I hope that's not true. Let me see what we can do for you. And then I remember asking you if you would write up one page to describe what had happened and were you willing to meet with me and the CEO of the hospital. And you agreed to do that. Remember going with me to see the CEO? Oh yes, and I wrote the, I wrote the story out. The CEO of the hospital listened to Dottie's story about her daughter. He said, let me look into this. Also in the room was the staff member who is the patient advocate in the hospital. Within an, maybe Dottie, an hour and a half, two hours, your daughter was back, back in, the in the hospital, hospital. again. Mm -hmm. And the hospital brought in five or six experts who were specialists in areas that were causing her all of her pain. And what was causing her 
to not be able to get better. And they looked at her, they took a lot of tests, and they realized that she was very ill. The doctor, the radiologist, who had done the original procedure, had not been aware of how ill she actually was. No one had told him. So they began, began working with her and setting up a whole new program to help her get better. When Dottie's daughter returned to the hospital, we were told we could come up to the room and see her. And Dottie and I went up to the room together. I was sitting, her daughter was in, her, in the hospital bed. Dottie was sitting on a couch. I was sitting on a chair. The doctor came in the room, walked over to Dottie, and immediately began to berate her and say to her, I don't like what you have done. You've turned, you've made a complaint about me. I've tried to do a good job, and I want you to know I don't like it. And I said to the doctor at that moment, why are you talking to this mother like that? We don't do that in this hospital. And she walked over with her arms very tight across her chest and said, and who are you? And I said, it makes no difference who I am. You cannot come in this room and talk to the mother like that. So she turned around and attacked the patient and said to the patient, I saved your life. Other doctors couldn't diagnose you. I did. I saved your life. And is that the way you appreciate it? And at that moment, the patient advocate walked in the room and called her out into the hall. It was disgusting to me that a doctor would speak like that to the family and to the patient, particularly all this family had gone through. I asked that the doctor be removed from that case and actually said, what is the procedure to file a complaint to have him removed from the hospital? So I understood in the next couple of days that that doctor was taken off of this patient's case and now has left the hospital. This family, I, I thought to myself how fortunate there is that there is a PFAC that can interfere and support a family in a situation like this. There was a daughter, a mother who was worried about whether or not her daughter was going to live and no one was paying attention to her. My great concern is what happens to patients when they leave the hospital and there's no follow-up from the hospital to see what happens to them in nursing homes. This patient would never have made it. I truly believe she would not have lived if someone had not interfered in this case. I appreciate the fact that her mother came and asked me and that I had been at the hospital, knew enough people there to be able to speak up for this patient. That's why PFACs are so important, and that's why staff, CEOs, and doctors need to listen to patient advocates. They often are able to learn things about families that the staff in the hospital may not know. Someone from the outside talking to this family, speaking up for this family, saved this woman's life. I, I hope that doctors and nurses learn to appreciate and listen to advocates for patients in hospitals. Yeah. Thank you so much, Reggie, for what you've done for my daughter. You literally Thank saved her life. And she's so thankful also. Thank you, Dottie. It was, an, it was a great opportunity to be able to work with you and to work with your daughter. And I'm so happy to know that she now is back at her work. She's feeling much better and that she is happy again and go on with her life.